Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of our Explain the Basics series. This week's episode, we cover a range of terminology that didn't really fit in any other episode. These include terms like RAID, VoIP, and more. Simple enough really, so let's get going with our first piece of terminology. SATA. It stands for Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, and in simplest terms, is the type of connection your hard drive uses to connect to your MVR or NAS. SATA is the updated connection technology that replaced the older parallel ATA connection technology and offers several compelling advantages over PATA connection. These include reduced cable bulk and cost, with the SATA cable consisting of a 7-pin connector and a small cable, versus the PATA cable's 40-pin connector and a very wide cable. Next we have RAID. This stands for Redundant Array of Independent Discs and is a feature available on all the Western Digital Purple hard drives that we sell. The idea behind RAID is to protect the footage you record from hard drive failure, and depending on a lot of factors relating to your specific system you will have to choose one of two popular types of RAID, either RAID 1 or RAID 5. RAID 1 is the simplest RAID setting as it duplicates all the footage you record and then saves the information to a pair of hard drives. This is also sometimes called mirroring. This is the best solution for protecting your footage if you have a small two hard drive setup. It does halve your storage space, but this is a small price to pay for the security of not losing any of your recordings. The next RAID option is RAID 5, which both improves reliability and performance. It works with any MVR or NAS that has three or more hard drives. So, how does it work? Well, take for example a NAS with four 4TB four hard drives. When RAID 5 is activated, it will start creating blocks of parity data. To quickly explain, blocks are the sectioned off areas of a disk where your data is stored. So, for example, here we have blocks A, B, C, and D on each disk. You then also have things called stripes. These are color coded in our example and stretch across all four disks. Now, back to parity data. There is a parity block for each stripe in your system. These blocks are basically a compressed version of the data stored in the rest of the corresponding stripe. This is your backup of the data stored in that stripe. So for example, if disk 2 fails and you lose the data from block A2, B2 and D2, you can use the compressed data stored in the corresponding parity blocks on the other disks to recover the lost data. Now there is one more commonly used RAID option, which is RAID 10. But the reason I haven't covered it here is that it is only really used by large server storage systems for office blocks or shopping centers with hundreds of cameras, and so it's something most regular customers won't use. P2P. You'll see this more and more as a feature of new IP cameras. It stands for peer-to-peer -peer and is an easy way of accessing your IP cameras from outside of your network, like via a smartphone or laptop. Peer-to-peer -peer was designed to replace the outdated port forwarding technique, which was tricky to do and insecure, as it required you to open ports on your router to allow your camera to reach the World Wide Web, and if it wasn't done properly, you could compromise the security of your network. Whereas peer-to-peer -peer is much easier to set up, all you need to do is download the corresponding manufacturer's app to your phone, scan the QR code or enter the serial number of the camera or MVR you want to access, and then once the device is found and the network connection is confirmed, you will be able to access the device from anywhere you can log onto the internet. But it's not just the setup time that makes peer-to-peer -peer better than port forwarding, it's the fact that peer-to-peer -peer has automatic video encryption to protect your data as it is sent over the open web, making it a much more secure way of passing data out of your network. VoIP VoIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol, and that pretty much sums up what a VoIP phone allows you to do, make phone calls over the internet. But you're probably wondering what is the advantage to using a VoIP phone over a standard landline phone? Well, the biggest one is simply cost. When you use a VoIP phone, there is no cost for you to make or receive calls, and no need to pay for an extra landline package from your network provider. All you need is an internet connection. You don't even need to have a physical phone if you wish. Because the calls are being made by the internet, you can just install software on your PC and use a microphone to make calls right from your desk. I know what you're probably thinking, what about people who don't have a VoIP phone, can I still call and receive calls from them? The answer is yes, you can still call a landline number. 
What happens when you make any call from a VoIP phone is the analog data of your voice is converted into digital information that is then sent over the internet to another VoIP phone. And so, all that happens when calling a landline is that the converted digital data is decoded back to an electrical signal that can then join the traditional copper wire landline network. Thank you for watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please do by clicking here. Check the description below for links to our Facebook, Twitter and Google Plus feeds. Follow the link here for our web shop and if you want more videos like this, click the playlist up here. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.